Hey guys, welcome to a brand new episode of Tea with Tea Pod, the only podcast that brings the tea acidy hot. And speaking about tea, this episode is proudly sponsored by my face, Lipton. My guest today is arguably one of the most toured artists on the continent. She's a singer, songwriter, actress who's often referred to as Mama Africa. My guest today is Yemi Ibirichi Alade. Please a round of applause for my guests. The queen is in the building. Speak for Tay. Ha, my queen. Now you are Bonjour, bonjour. Oui, oui. Yeah, oui. <laughs> bon, bonjour. Okay, bonjour. Bonjour is bonjour now. The... Yeah, bonjour is bonjour, oui. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. hello bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. bonjour. Comment you know, ça va? Bien. Ça va bien. Ça va bien. Ça va bien. Ça va bien. The French, because the last time I saw you was in Paris. In France, so, but yeah. Yeah. Me, and so it looks hard. like nothing's stuck. French is... <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. I'm going to yeah. take classes. You just, you just need a little more. Conversation helps. What? Just conversation. How can you converse when you don't, even, you don't even know the basics? Just the basics. Bonjour, bonjour. Mm-hmm. So like how, I mean, how do you converse when you don't even know the basics? Yeah, but that's the, those are just the basics. Bonjour, bonjour. Which is hello, hello. But most people know it as good morning, good morning. Yeah. yeah. So bonjour, bonjour. Good day, good day. Uh, comment ça va? That mm-hmm. is, how are you? Mm-hmm. You say, ça va bien. Oh, Yemi, comment ça va? Ça va bien. Oh. Et vous? Bien. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost there. You're halfway Yemi, through. Please. Look, the beautiful thing about learning a language mm. is that don't be, don't be, forget about the shame. Forget about the possibility of sounding wrong silly or being silly. wrong. Yeah. Forget about it. Just do it. Let's yeah, me, laugh about it. I've been learning this language for a long time. In my old days, I want to learn. Really. My dear, you, look, if it's about money, you're going to learn now. Okay, I will. Actually. Yeah, yeah. The brain is very, very... Find what excites you and learn it. I know. <laughs> oh my God. This is so exciting already. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Welcome to the show, um, Yemi. I've been chasing Thanks. you forever. I know that you're the, you're so busy. As I said at the beginning, you're one of the most toured artists on the continent right now. So I understand that you're busy. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Pleasure is all mine. Yes, Tay. yes, yes. Let's happy get into finally it. finally made it happen. Yes. I'm happy. Um, so, you know, we know Yemi Alade, we know Mama Africa, we know Johnny Krona. I want to know who, who is a Birichi? Like, I'm sure that to the rest of your family... She's you are... boring, you know? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I want to know <laughs> First her. First of all. Yeah. Um, a Birichi... I mean, Berichi, I'm the kind of person that really is a lover of the little things. I'm into details, the details of life itself, Mm -hmm. the beauty in life, the joy in the little things. I'm a big foodie. Um, I love food. Mm -hmm. I I wouldn't say I love to cook, but I like to experience new recipes and I like to um, enjoy new flavors without overpowering the original taste. I'm a food critic in my own way. It's hard to actually cook for me and I'll be pleased. I'm one of those people. Oh. Um, but in, in all, I am simple. But not so simple that the barest minimum is what I'll be dealing with. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much fine. Yeah, I, I, like, if... I like that Iberichi. I okay. really want to hang out with her. Okay. So, you go, you go. Sleep, wake up, sleep, wake up. That's all. So wait, how different is Iberichi from Miss Yemi? Like Yemi, the superstar. Yes, yeah, is, is is Yemi the alter ego? Is Iberichi the real person? And Iberichi yeah. is hundred percent the real person. Um, the alter ego is definitely Yemi Alade on stage. Mm. When I'm not on stage, I'm my person. I'm who I am. On show day, from morning to night, you're talking to Yemi Alade because my head is already in the game. Um. I'm, I'm nervous. I am, I'm, I'm being nervous because I'm excited for what I'm about to experience. I'm nervous because I don't know the outcome. I'm also hopeful because I believe it will be fantastic. Yeah. So all these nerves and everything is, is just hitting me at the same time. And I will come off as a slightly different person. I will come off as a slightly different person. Makes sense. But because you would think that at this level where you've literally been everywhere around the world, collaborated with the biggest of the biggest, had the biggest songs, you would, be, you would, you would think that you should be confident going on any stage at this know, point right? because you literally conquered everything. That's what they say. Mm. It's not true. The same thing someone told me when I was still very up and coming. person said, ah, when you finally blow, you go see now. Everything will change. You go relax. Mm. You go not go distress yourself. Now lie. 
Na lie. You think it's easy? Birds, they take flight, but I'm very sure there's a lot of work that goes into staying uh, in flight. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. flight mode is another mm. story. I mean, that I'm sure that's why even when, um, if you study the, the way um, airplanes are piloted, yeah. the actual work of the pilots is to Maintain. take off and to land. But the main work of, of being in the air, they left it to the engine and to the mechanics yeah. of everything because some things are not easily done with the human factor. Yeah. You need to make sure, you have need to cancel all error. And so I know, it's not easy, Sha, but um, yeah, we're here. You're here, you're doing it. Okay, so let's talk about family rights. Um, I know that... You were born to an Igbo mom. Yes. And your father is Yoruba. Yes. What, I, I imagine what childhood was like, having that dynamic at home. Can you tell me about, like, childhood growing up? Oh, growing up, I didn't know that there was a difference, first of all. Mm-hmm. I was I just had my mom, my dad. And we're one of those families where we had uncles and aunties living with us and cousins mm-hmm. and people from the village, too. <laughs> <laughs> That are just related by village, but they're automatically our own clothes and aunts. In, Exactly. Yeah. My dad was that kind of person. So he had a lot of his family members and the house was a big house, you know. But um, I did not know that. I did not. I wasn't aware of the cultural differences until later. Especially when people start arguing if I'm Yoruba and Ib- or Igbo. Mm-hmm. And he said, I just want to Yoruba. Mm-hmm. And it's not said as a compliment. That's when I started noticing that, oh, there's a That's difference yeah. in the cultures and the family that I'm born to is not very common, you know, to be Yoruba and Igbo yeah, at the same, same time. time. But one thing I did enjoy when I now realized that I was born to a multicultural family is the food. <laughs> of course, it's the food. I, you know, you get to eat the Igbo, the Igbo uh, delicacies mm-hmm. and also the Yoruba ones and then the culture, the attires. Mm-hmm. And I think all these things at the end of the day inspired my love for all cultures. I'm in love with the beautiful colors of mm-hmm. our accessories, our outfits, our tribal marks. I mean, there's a story behind every stroke of genius in our tradition. Mm-hmm. And I think that really... Um, Spurred me on to be the person I am today. Oh, that's amazing. But my dad was a retired commissioner of police. So, growing up with that man wasn't about <laughs> Yoruba or Igbo. <laughs> it was very disciplined? Very disciplined. I wasn't allowed to attend any parties. And I didn't know I wasn't allowed to attend any parties. <laughs> I didn't know. So, my mom, who is the yopi yopi of the family, yeah. you know, she would go when there's a birthday party in school, like a celebrant, and everybody has been invited. She will take us to go buy the clothes, all the shoes and everything ready for the, the party. And I'm ready for this party <laughs> on the day. The door is locked, too. I don't wear cloth. I know if you go. I don't understand. I, I, my daddy I said his daughter is not going anywhere. He has told his wife that his daughter is not going anywhere. So I got used to it and I just didn't bother anymore. Oh, really? Um, yes, I just. Never went to any parties. But at some point, I was allowed to go for just this one party. And I danced. Hey, hey. Oh, this is where they save. I, eh? I said, eh? So this is how they used to do in all these parties. Me? I, eh? Look, I want best dancer now. I trust you. Of course I you was. Didn't they wait I, for I, your, your moment. I offloaded <laughs> generational trauma. <laughs> <laughs> I love I'm it. happy my father was not there because I really put mm. him to shame that day. <laughs> you know, you know the Skype party where you could go and say, so which person give me that? Ah, I mean, we don't know that person. I danced into the night. You don't I understand. As a kid, I danced into the night, and then guess when I enter university, I continue. <laughs> <laughs> like you know that thing where you when when you have been shielded and locked up oh, for a long time. Oh, it's not so good. And finally enter university. Hey, it's open season. No, my first year of university was dedicated to outing. Don't worry. I think I used to mark register. I swear I was a mess. <laughs> oh yes. I because I, oh, I was yes. also locked up like that. So once I got into Unilag, I tested freedom. Unilag. I Same here. Unilag. Unilag, yeah. That's Unilag is where the freedom starts. Like <laughs> your parents know the it's not a private school. You can go out the gates. One hundred percent. Yo, was, it was, it was I belonged vibe. to the streets <laughs> <laughs> for that period of time. But then I got hired. I mean, yeah. it was too much too soon. Yeah. Too much, too soon. Okay, yeah, we I get into the club. I'm the kind of people that walk into the club and I will not sit down. Yeah. Until they say, Oh yeah, I'm gonna go. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> I go, eh, I go like, dance. Performance. I, you say for club, you get performance. I did perform, not perform. <laughs> Look, 
You you are sorry. <laughs> you are sorry. You know, there's a, there's a, I remember one day in the club, right? So me, my friends and I had gone to the club. So one of my guys came from some not not Lagos, not yeah. Lagos. So he didn't understand the culture of the club here. Gotcha. No more American baby won't go enjoy and safe. So yes. I see, as the drink entered, body, the boy just did dance, did dance, did dance. Mm. 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 I know Lagos is very uppity. Mm. You know? As he did dance, I'm my friend. Oh, the shop <laughs> like this. Eh? Where is he from? <laughs> I mean, I don't need, because myself, I don't need, my friend don't need to me, I don't need to dance any hour already. <laughs> As he talked to me, he said, did they pay him to come and dance here? My body just, I'm just like, I'm just like, but this is how we're supposed to be clubbing now. Like, it just made me feel so weird about it. Eh? I said, look at the boy differently. But guess what, Yemi? He was the one having fun, we're not. <laughs> did he just ask you if they paid him I to said, come and dance? He held the champagne, he was like, was your friend dancing like this? Did they pay him to come and dance? My friend, he danced, sharp. My friend, he does all those choreography, does all those one, two. <laughs> I beg, I like that type I like. I beg. Yeah, but that's the fun because I was trying to dance with him as well. But then it, it just showed how Lagosian. Me, I'll choose who I'll be partying with from that point, though. Mm-hmm. Hey, mm-hmm. no, opity, no yeah. problem. We shall not blend. Yeah, day your day. Yes, I, I yeah. want to really want to have fun. I will go with that guy, that one that is dancing like mm-hmm. they paid him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because that's mm-hmm. the real fun. But okay, so I want to ask you when music started for you because for somebody who was shielded like you, right? Yeah. When did music finally start? Were you allowed to express yourself as much as, you know, because some parents, parents like your your father would want you to focus on your studies because, yeah. yeah. That's a very serious man, yeah? Um, I think, as much as my dad didn't want me to engage in any... Extracurricular. I would say just parties. His mm. problem was parties. Right. But in school, from primary to secondary school, they couldn't, as long as they sent me to school, I was allowed to, you know, school is not just about the academics. Yes. There's the other things, all the gymnastics, all the extracurricular mm-hmm. act, uh, extra curricular acti- activities mm-hmm. that are there as well. So, as long as I'm in school, I'm allowed to do everything that's on uh, on school grounds, right? Yes, yes. And so, I indulged in every single one of them. I was in a math class. I was in the jet club. I was a brownie. I was a gym, uh, gymnast. Obviously, a singer. Uh, I did ballet. Uh, uh, football, of course. Basketball. Uh, um, I tried karate, but I tried to be too late. I didn't know that I had it in me to be fighting. <laughs> a fighter. <laughs> yes. I love it. Yes. And so I, I was everywhere in school. And as long as it did not affect my academics. my academics they were fine with it so my dad never had a conversation with that because mm. in school you know even when you win something in the singing club or whatever they give you a prize right. so like that's kind of something to be happy yeah. for your kid brings back a prize or maybe mm-hmm. he's top five in class mm. so as long as that was happening I was good to go they noticed that it wasn't affecting my academics yeah. um, and I was you know Good smart. girl, you know, smart, yeah. good girl, mm-hmm. first daughter, ETC. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it was fine. It was fine for them. So I did involve myself in a lot of those activities in school, as long as my academics were top. Yeah. But, but singing was the, the major activity. It was one of the major activities oh. in primary school. But in primary school, like all these activities I mentioned were all primary school activities. Yeah. I was everywhere. Too much energy. Energy yeah. bunny. Yeah. And when I went into secondary school, it became mostly drama and singing, basketball and football. Yeah. Short so schools, singing was not, never the focus. You know how some kids would would know. You're right. Singing was never the focus. Really? You were 100% right. That's what so I even at home, say. right? So you're not the singing child. I was the singing child. I'm still the singing child. Yeah. I'm the bird you wish you could tie the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't sing as much these days and I really hate that for myself in terms of personally. Normally, when I was maybe five years ago, I would wake up singing in the afternoon I'm singing. Mm. But these days when I get the opportunity to catch a melody on my own, I'm really happy. It puts a smile on my face because it just shows me that I'm still the same person on yeah. the inside. Yeah. Um, it's not about only singing for people. I should be able to sing my Enjoy heart to it. joy. Because to be sincere, sometimes if you try this, if you're in a bad mood, Tenisa, sing something. I always sing to God in Beautiful. a bad mood. Beautiful. Yes, so. No, not that type. Oh. This is your smile. You know, I've been calling for church before. Okay, I wait. Sing, oh. No, what I mean is that, so when you're in a bad mood, mm. you start singing to God. Yes, so that's my a... mom does it and that's a threat sometimes. Ah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I start when is the bad news? I start singing. <laughs> I start reminding him who he is. The Lord that answered <laughs> by fire. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't get the warfare like that. Because uh-huh. that <laughs> no, was different. I, you know, I, I mean, just sing happy sing tunes. Sing to lift your spirits, right? Yes. Yeah. And you see that it will just become, your problem will be less intense mm. mentally. Because also for you, like, singing has not become a business for you. Yes, sir. So sometimes it's, it's work. All so the for the days that you can find yourself alone, just chilling and not being pressured to perform to anybody, but just sing, yeah. must be really good. Yes, yes. It's always a, a refreshing feeling to just sing for the love of it. Yeah. To myself, for myself, just because I can, just because I feel like. So, but did you did you always know that you were going to be the Emil Ade? You know when children are very sure that I'm going to be a star when I'm, when I'm 22, I'm going to have a record... I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Were you so sure that this was a career path or it was just a thing where this is one of my passions. I'm going to explore it and see where it takes me. It's crazy. It's a, it's a mix of, of both. Um, it was always a passion and I was very hopeful to see where it would lead me, where it would take me. Did I feel like I needed to drop everything I was doing in life and focus solely on music? No. Because I love the idea of it, but I'm not sure I want. I did not want it to be a career. I did not see it as a career. It was a big hobby, a hobby I was very invested in, but not a career. Hmm. If you had asked me 11, 12 years ago if I wanted to be a musician, I would not pick that as a career choice. I still wasn't <laughs> into it, for real. As much as I was representing all my schools, as much as I was into a lot of music related yeah. um stuff, yeah, I just believed that, yes, yeah, so this hobby, I would do something with it, but I'm going to continue focusing on my academics like my parents want me to, and that I as well as I think is good for me because yeah. I might need this to actually get a job. So you were going to get a job if it didn't work out? Yes, 100%. I was really looking at my options. So what changed? I won a talent show. Yes, speak talent show. Yes. Uh, hey, I've been a fan for, for the longest. Can you imagine? Okay, so I want to talk about Unilag. I want to talk about the talent show. I want to talk about a lot of things. But let's start from Unilag. Because you, you, you were in Unilag when you went for that show. Yes, I Tell was. me about your life in Unilag before the show. Before the show. And after the show. <clears throat> <laughs> My life in Unilag, as I said, I've always been a boring person. <laughs> so, um, so, apart from my hundred level that I was um, doing studies in nightlife <laughs> instead of <coughs> the time, time. Why are you such a nightlife girl like that? You. I don't understand. It I've just, never seen you on the streets. Like, I know, I've never. I know, but that, that first year, you I realized that I was going in. Mm. Oh, we're going out. I'm coming. Oh, I'm going out. I'm following you. Daddy, this is your, this is your fault. You locked me in for too it's, long. Yes, it's Daddy that cost it. Daddy knows. <laughs> <laughs> My life in like before the talent show. I mean, young girl trying to make it through life. Um, at that point in my life, my dad had lost his job. Um, I say lost his job, even though he was a policeman, he was retired. Yeah. Um prematurely right. for reasons not disclosed. Okay. That can happen when you're a government worker. Right. And even in some private uh, institutions, that can happen. So that mm. happened and that hit us hard. Mm. And my mom was working way in over her, her, head. her way in over her head to take care of um, everyone and lift. Because my dad was the one doing everything and all of a sudden, boom, yeah. the dynamics of life just moved. Just your lifestyle. Yo. Mm. And so, I was just this young girl with little or nothing trying to make something from this world that has nothing to offer her. <laughs> Literally. Like, the day that I realized, yo, because if you're the child of a commissioner or police, it means there's convoys. Yes. Outside your door, morning to night. It means you sneeze and there are rooms full of... Um, um, armed men. You know yeah. that part. You're there, protected, when it literally. comes to food and everything that you need, we had rooms full with commodities. I mean, yeah, bags and bags and bags of rice. We had an animal farm. I mean, 
literally the house itself, the boys' quarter is the equivalent of a five bedroom um apartment. Mm. Do you want to talk about the house? So like the life was big, it was lavish, we lacked nothing. And all of a sudden, flat on the floor, nose in the sand. How about hand look, it was I had to look in the mirror. Because, you know, as a shielded child, uh, someone who is very much in her head, <laughs> I had to look myself in the mirror and say, and me, in this life, you have to be realistic. At mm. this point in time, yes, you were this, you were that, you were so so and so. Now you are nothing, you are nobody. You have to get up, get out and be somebody. And that involves talking to people you've never met, talking to people who might not want to talk to you, being in spaces that might make you uncomfortable, doing things that might make you uncomfortable but will not um, change who you, change who, who you yeah, are. Change who you are or take away your integrity. Yeah. And with that pep talk, my life changed because I started, I embraced my reality and that was ground zero. So, and the so, only way was up. So, but, but you, mean, you know how powerful this conversation you, you're having right now for a young girl at that time mm. to have? Because even as an adult, to have that conversation is a very powerful it's thing. It's scary. It was, I was confused because I wanted to move, but I couldn't move because I'm afraid. I'm not used to having to do things for myself. Yes, yes. But I knew that the hunger where they come, because this <laughs> Gary where they soak, you know too much. No, stop. <laughs> but but, but how, how much did your life change instantly? Because... But as a commissioner of police, even if they let you go, anything happens, right? I mean, you still have your tentacles in different You're spaces. Right. You You're know, right. you want... My dad was Father Abraham, taking care of oh, everybody. Yeah, I know that. One. Second of all, my dad was the gem that you probably would go generations before you find in any police force. Yeah. I mean, the kind of guy that takes no bribe. We've had brand new cars sent to the house that he sent back out. He doesn't take... And I'm 100% sure that that's one of the reasons why well, he yeah. was prematurely retired because yeah. he was into no legit, yeah. only legit... Um, uh, anything about him was legit. He didn't yeah. do any hanky-panky. He, he may, tried to live his life within his wages. And that was just a couple of people. Even the commodities I'm saying that food, the house, is Christmas. Oh, mm. will you say no to Christmas gifts? Yeah. You take, and if he says no, my mother, when he goes, my mother will say, bring it. <laughs> bring it. She go collect her. <laughs> we need rice. It's in part the of house. the job. Come, it's part of it, you know? And the good part is that sometimes we even used to give the rice out because it was a lot. It was mm. too much. I mean, too much, Timisa. I should have opened rice business. By now, you'd have. <laughs> um, I would have been Gucci. I love it. Yeah. But yeah, otherwise it was it was a it's a hustle. Still is. Okay. So so that happened and you had to face your life. So going into you like you, you're smarter, right? So mm. you had to be the girl that would say, you know, what's next for me? How am I going to work to ensure that we don't really exactly suffer? But also that's a lot of burden on a young girl, even though you're the first child. Yeah. You're the first child, right? Yes. So you see that that's a lot of burden on you. Mm -hmm. And you were probably in your teens as well. Uh -huh. My mom is such a hardworking woman that she did everything that she could to make sure that we did not feel the pressure. I mean, when she had, when she made some money, she would make sure that we still went to the top designer um, stores where she normally would shop clothes for us. I mean, my mom will have close to one very small money that she used to take us to rough and tumble. Hmm. She used to take us to Wranglers. And we don't get money. I want to finish. We enter a taxi. We go, we go. <laughs> She, she she just had a dream. She had she just believed that her kids must get what she did not get. And mm. no no amount of of um attack from the devil will steal that dream of hers. It was a dream and she held on to it. Mm. And every opportunity that she found herself, she always strived for the best for her kids. We attended British schools. This woman did that. And that's why I, that's why I picked up French as well. Oh, yeah. you see why it's good to oui, invest oui. in your kids. Exactly. She said that there was a day during the period something was about to go left. That they, she was driving back home, I think from picking us from school or something. And then she saw a big billboard somewhere in Kejajiari. And he said, 
where is the inheritance of the children? My man will sleep after that day. <laughs> <laughs> where are my children's inheritance? Hey, I must move. She could not sleep. And that haunted her. And I think God really found a way to reach out to her and speak to her. And she decided that the inheritance she would give us if she couldn't provide um, um, land lifestyle, masses yeah. or, mm. or properties and, you know, all that lao lao life, she would give us, she would make sure that we inherited the quality of life and standard that would be the bedrock for the biggest and best versions of ourselves. Mm. She invested in the human side of us. I mean, the biggest investment in the world Education. is human investment. Yeah. Human investment. When yeah. you invest in a person, someone who is willing and ready to 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 be a multiplier. Mm -hmm. Oof. And I can I sure. can freely say that you you are the multiplier. You are. I accept you've it. You've shown in your career over time. You just keep wowing us. Uh, so, but give me my pick my pick talent story. I need, right. I need my pick talent. Told story. me what you want to hear. Yeah. So how did that happen? Because that's the first time I ever saw you on TV. Yeah. Like, how did you make it into that competition? I don't even know how I... I had no plans of going because I had done one small competition in Unilag where in the beginning, they told me that I lacked confidence and I needed to work on that so that I could make it to the finals. Yeah. The finals came and they told me, well, it would have been you, but you're overconfident. Uh. In 24 <laughs> hours, I moved from <laughs> no confidence... <laughs> To overconfidence. I, think... I swore for everybody there. That's what in my mind. You. Yes. Because me, how old? I finished, I think I finished university maybe when I was 17. No, 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 no. I must have been. No, I, I got, I won the talent show when I was 1920. So I finished university at 2021. Yeah. That's how old I was. So when I did that talent show in particular, I was probably 19. Yeah. I'm a young girl and I'm trying to try this talent thing. You put tell me 24 hours. I don't have confidence. I, don't I like go confidence. and stand for a mirror. I dance at Jasko. <laughs> I dance Michael Jackson. I dance Shakira. Do a little kumba. I get my things together. I not going to tell me I'm overconfident. So you put everything on the stage. I said, Shege, all of you, I'm never doing this thing again. Because <laughs> I was confused. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't understand my bearing. Mm. So it's really a surprise to to anyone who knows that back end story that I still went ahead to do peak talent show but turns out that I did not want to participate like I said in any talent show whatsoever but a friend of mine went online during the period that there was some kind of strike in lag um, the one strike that actually happened because <laughs> uh, it was a nationwide strike yeah. and she filled the form and said you must go you must go you must go I had nothing doing I don't like being idle and so I so what's the worst that will happen? Make I, I go see what's in there happen. You know, uh, many things happened that day, even just for the auditions that would have deterred me from even sticking around. But I stuck around because like I said, there was nothing else to, to do. do. Yeah. So I stayed on that queue. I made it through the auditions. I remember when I see the playback of the audition, my voice was shaking. Shaking like a, you know, when you stand in front of fan and you're singing, <laughs> it was that terrible, effect. it was bad. Um, but what's her name? Um, oh, this female rapper, Weird MC, yeah, she was so kind to me. She was one of the judges, right? Yes, yeah. she saw something and said I should that she can hear my nerves, but she believes that there is a voice in me. And I really thank God for positioning her that day because when I watched my auditions, it was terrible. Mm. I would not select me if I were a judge, but she heard something and that means she has an ear for greatness. Mm. And yeah, that's how I went to the Peak Talent show. <sighs> <laughs> we auditioned at um, Police College, the Police College grounds in Ikeja, GRE. Mm. And it was a nationwide competition so we're talking about millions you know, Nigerians are too talented yeah. millions of people turning up um, and somehow I made it to top 120 I, I still found it as a big joke did it I help just, your confidence because this was you who had who had no confidence yes actually it helped my confidence a little I was surprised but I still wasn't moved I mean I was ready to go home that's my mentality to me when I do make I go wow. then the one that now bust my medulla oblongata is when um, we got to top 60 and 
you know how it is because you're singing so many songs and you meet new people. You guys start talking about the songs and trying to choose songs. The person in front of me had his own song. Next thing he went on stage, he singing my own song. Itche. And we have 20 seconds each to be on that stage. What will I sing? Did he know that you were supposed to sing that song? Of course. So he stole it from you. Yes, maybe he had where I sang and decided that <laughs> if he sings it, he, go pass he will pass me. He <laughs> abandoned his own and I don't know his song. I went to go and sing my own. See, in this life, be careful who you tell yes, so, your moves. Your though. truth. Some people will either try to block it, counteract it, or just be in your way in general. Spoil your moves. That's an early lesson in life. Sure. You know what? Eh? I was shocked. 20 seconds. I didn't, 20 seconds is not enough to recover. I'm sure when you went up, you're like this. Do you know what I did? <laughs> I was now. The crowd was already saying, because there was a crowd. There was a free crowd, obviously. Mm-hmm. And they were like, ah, ah, le, le. What's this one? What's doing this one? Like, there's some people that, you know, yeah. area, there's some areas where they're, yeah. and they're like, ah, really? They're already giving me that vibe. Me, I'm already f- afraid. <laughs> you know what I did? I sang the same song again. <laughs> <laughs> like, after him. You know the terrible thing about music? One of, the thing, actually, about music is that the element of surprise is a big deal. Yeah. The fact that someone had just sang that song and I was going up 20 seconds after him to sing the song again, it just kind of gives the impression that I'm on un- I'm unprepared and unserious. First yeah. of all, like, I know get here. You know everything the guy don't sing. Because nobody knows the back, back well, end story. He sang, Sha. Mm-hmm. Not the way I would But it was have. your song. So. It was mine. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, and then I went on stage. I sang the song. And then Red MC again caught me short. She's like, no, 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 no. Wait, is it that you did not hear that someone had sang that song? I, I was trying to say, he took my, my he took my, but my tongue was tied. <laughs> I never see this kind of thing in my whole life. And everything was happening at the same time. Mm. And she did something that no one did all through that night. She gave me another opportunity to pick another song, which I did. And I made it to top 25. What song was that? I don't remember. No, I think it was, um, Natasha Bednifield. Mm, I'm trying to think. Which is a popular song from her. It's one of the two. It's a, Feel the rain on your skin. No one else can feel it for you. Only you can let it in. Yeah, me the singer. No one else. Yeah. Uh, I have a bit of snot, but yeah. Could have sounded better. <laughs> but yes, I think, I, I think that was one of the songs yeah. or one of the ones that is really... Um, exciting to the ears but it was a Natasha song mm-hmm. um, and I sang it and I made it to top 25 and I said okay you're about to be camped with other people with other 25 people from other 20 states of Nigeria so, so you're thinking, in the house I'm telling you and that is where competition starts though me, trust me, I'm still on serious now. Mm-hmm. I've made it this far. Now I'm people that can't sing. That's what, you know, that's what I used to run. Yeah. Like you saying bolts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the kind of singer that does yeah. runs just like that. I'm not a running singer. Yeah. I'm more of uh, impact and technique. Focal dexterity. Yes, a few vibrato here mm-hmm. and there. But people were running. Ah! So did you feel intimidated? That's why. Ah, people didn't sing they for you. Yes, they fear they catch me. <laughs> It was like I moved from boiling kettle to boiling pots. I was seeing bottom pots there. But it was because I was ready to go, nothing surprised me. <laughs> so you were just like, anything will happen, will happen. Yes. I was ready to go. I did not think that I would be able to, you know, mm-hmm. um, stand up to the occasion, you know. But as we were in the house and we were picking songs, you know, it's... Uh, I, I continued moving on from one stage to another. Then I made it to top six. And <sighs> I was still asking myself, why am I still here? When I got to top six, that is when the calabash broke. I stopped eating. I had now gotten to, I had now become a nervous wreck. I didn't have appetite. Because the lodge does, we had buffets morning and afternoon. I could not eat. I was so afraid that my tummy had twisted. That is how afraid of the 
of the possible future I was and still very confused because how am I yes. still here? Mm -hmm. And look at these champions I'm against. And they're putting me on stages in front of so many people that I don't know me, that I'm an inside person. Mm -hmm. It was so much at the same time. We sang our songs for sound check. And during the sound check, they allowed some of the coaches who were going to um, judge over us, they allowed them to listen and watch our sound check in case they wanted to give us some tips. Um, tips. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, Jude and Paul of Peace Square, they were there. Mm -hmm. They're one of my biggest idols. Huh. Do you know what this girl did? I chose um, two songs, uh, Beyonce, Sweet Dreams, and uh, one of her other songs. Listen. I sang everything from beginning to end off-key. I did not even, when I was singing off-key, I did not even mm. try to retrace and get back to it. I stayed off-key from beginning to end. And that is a day before the finals. And you didn't know that you were off-key? I knew my brain was not clicking. It could not change. I was just in go mode. How nervous were you? Though? Ah, tried drinking five, uh, like a Red Bull energy <laughs> drink or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that I was on that because I don't drink. Yeah, um, I don't drink that. But if you took that, that is how shook. That's how shook I was, and so. I sang that off key and I knew that finally now I'm at the point where I want to disgrace myself. Yeah. So I stayed crying. <laughs> <laughs> I cried, cried, cried to the extent that the organizers found them P Square to come to my room and come and console me and tell me one or two things. Mm. They said, Yemi, you have a good voice. Just put your head in the game. This kind of crying, nobody will help you. It will not help you. Nobody will pity you. <laughs> there are so many people that want to take your spot to just. If you make mistake, just correct yourself. It's normal, it's normal. Uh-uh, it's normal, it's normal. They left. See advice, so. See what I go do. I finally got myself together. And um, I did my performance. And when they were about to announce the winner, because there was this guy, tall, fine. He could sing for days. All the girls, if he just sticks out his tongue even while singing, <laughs> ah! everything he did, they would clap and he knew how to dress. So everything was just cha 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 cha. Ah. You don't need to say a big. I, I, I was congratulating him already, you know. I was telling him he has won. He should not worry. He has won. He has won. He has won. He has won. We went on stage and time time for the for the organizers to announce the winner. And they said, the winner is. Look at me. I'm just looking at the floor. <laughs> Call this thing the... I go. I know that feeling. Yeah, me, Alade. I'm still looking at the phone. <laughs> yeah, me, Alade. So it didn't click I... on the first it call. It did not click. Me, I've gone home. <laughs> <laughs> it Yo. did not click. It did not click. And then, you know, eventually, when I heard that, my dad was also in the audience that day. And my uh, half-brothers as well, they mm. were in the audience that day. Mm. And it was... More than anything, I would say that that platform did two things for me. It's, I'm happy that it made my family See. come out physically to support me. Mm -hmm. That was a moment that I was, will never take for granted. I mean, before my dad passed, that was mm -hmm. like the one time he got to see me on stage in person. And as for me, myself, I think that that platform just exposed me to everything a musician would encounter in this journey to mm. success. It happened too quick, mm -hmm. all at the same time. Mm. But my oh my, it, I think if I didn't go through that, I probably would not be a musician today. So it sparked something in you. It did. And the minute I won, I realized this hobby can be a career. Ish. And that is where it changed. Hallelujah. Of course, money is involved. Yeah. Well, so you want some money? You, you want did. a car as well? Abby. No car. Oh. I did a made in edition, so I had okay, no car. Yeah. It was the second edition that they did that the winner had a car. Of course, I swore for all of them because <laughs> <laughs> I still had no car mm -hmm. as of then. Um, 
But yeah, there was some it, money involved and development money. Da, da, da. It changed the dynamics for you. Because going back to school, you're not a star. Everybody watched the show. Yeah. I mean, I what happened it. after the show? I you hated it. Because you are... I didn't have a car. People knew me. I didn't know them. So you probably go to they that... They were stressing me. That Marimi place to take taxi. Yes, I was. I know. Sometimes I don't know how money I walk. <laughs> ah. I know. Because, you know, back in school, we had some stars who were... They were uni lax students, but they were yeah. stars out of the school, but they didn't yeah. have money. Yes, was I was stressful. in that category. I didn't have money. But, and even the markets. They knew me. I did not know them. So even to buy something, they could just distress me. I almost started to hate it. I started to mm-hmm. resent it. I really felt like... Um, I really felt like it was too much too soon because yeah. I was put on the pedestal to be a star, but I didn't Not exactly really. have the tools to look and act be, and actually yeah. be the star. Yeah. I'm walking from place to place. I'm camouflaging, wearing glasses, tying scarves. Nobody can try to <laughs> identify me while I'm entering bus. You know, it was just too much. I mean, new I life, new true. problems. Yeah. Uh, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. But... As usual, trust me, I always give myself pep talks. I went to the mirror as well again. And I said, Yemio, I'm back. Huh. This time around, just remind yourself that in reality, a superstar cannot be created in just three, four months. So I had to just keep reminding myself of that. That now, I'm going to deal with my own reality of becoming a true, authentic superstar. And that would also mean disguising or just doing what you have to do. Yeah, and trying very hard not to resent it. Hmm. It's a lot. I need one of those Yemi Spare talks because I feel like my life is, I'm going through it right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, if I. If I did one of those Yemi's pep talk every single day, I think I would be in a better place. Because it's a very powerful place to be able to speak to yourself. You must. And remind yourself what's important. Yes. What what happened after that pep talk? So you got into the music proper now. Yes. And then um I got into the music proper now. I I <laughs> I met people. Um so I in my hostel, I'm the songbird. Um mm. And I would leave my door open and be singing morning, afternoon, night, you know. And there was a girl down the hall who walked. Look, to be sincere, that my singing always brought visitors to my door. Both good and bad requests. <laughs> <laughs> but in terms of good requests, there's a there's a there's a fellow hostel mate of mine who lives down the hall. Because the hostel is like an apartment. Even some people that work are in that yeah. apartment. So she she came down to my room. My door was open, obviously, while I was singing. And she told me, Yemi, I have a friend who I think you should meet. And I believe he would help you. I think you need help to make this Some. talent into a career where you can make money and take care of yourself. And she gave me the number and I did not call. Because I'm afraid. I'm a, I'm a fear. So wait, wait, before you continue. So that's, I'm not crazy after all because, you know, people think that stars are just made. It's like you just become so confident and everything. Hearing you talk, I'm just like, nobody actually just starts out, starts out confident, of right? Of course. Because you now... Unless you're a narcissist and or you, something. Yeah. You now and the person you're explaining, I'm just like... I know, it's not making... Yeah. I'm still very shy, very... Yeah. I don't, um, but I do know when to stand my ground. That is what I have learned. The need to stand your ground or else you will stand for nothing. Mm. Um, but for, for all those days and all the times that I needed to just show up, I tried my best to show up for myself. So you, you don't call this guy? What happened? I did not call him. Oh. Weeks passed. I still did not call him. Nobody told me. I carry phone. 